Hello, so today's going to be a good old-fashioned gas mask video. So this is a Czech or Czechoslovakian SEMA LPS mask and um, you can read it actually says LPS at the bottom of the mask if the camera wants to focus. It also says CHS 1838 39V um, 1938 so the mask itself was made in 1938 and then or it might be LPS, sorry if I just said CPS. So LPS. And what this mask is, um, is it's quite interesting because it's kind of like a dual history mask, like a lot of things Czechoslovakian. So what basically happened with Czechoslovakia during World War II, if you're unaware, I'm sure a lot of you watching will be aware, uh, they were occupied by Nazi Germany. And when Nazi Germany took over Czechoslovakia, they actually kept a lot of the production of things going and just basically had it made for them. So that happened with a lot of their tanks and things like that, and um, same with their sort of gas masks and everything. So although this is actually um, originally a Czech mask, um, a lot of them were basically refitted to be Nazi masks, which didn't change anything. Uh, they took Nazi filters, but um, we'll get on to that. But some of them had extra stamps added to them, and obviously after certain years anything still in production would have been made technically under the Third Reich. So. Let's take a look at the mask. So the filter is the bit that's actually identifying it and I'm not going to wear it with the filter on because it's a bit of a battered old filter and we know what's in these. But you can see there it's not very clear there's a Reich Eagle stamp or whatever you want to call it on top there. But yeah, it's like a big drum filter. But the actual filter itself is from 1940. Um, so definitely when Czechoslovakia was occupied. I can't actually remember what year it was. Was it 38 or 39 Czechoslovakia was occupied? Because that was the peace in our time thing uh, with the occupation of Czechoslovakia. I definitely won't invade anywhere else, I promise, said the Fuhrer. So the eyepieces of this one aren't in great condition. Now, but the other interesting thing about this, and it's not so obvious from this one, but the previous masks in the series, it is more obvious. They were based off the British sort of Mark IV um, sort of general service respirators. So uh, what I think it was is one of the older masks in this series that was also made by the same company. That was basically a license built Mark IV but they gave it a different name. And I believe they actually were smart enough to put a filter port on the bottom of it. You know rather than having the sort of attachment for the hose. So they were like more ahead of their time. But this is basically it's a better head harness than the British ones, we'll give them that. So it's got a neck strap on it, and then it's got this sort of five-piece head harness that's all sort of slightly intertwined with each other, a bit like some of the Soviet masks had. Um, so if you want to look inside the mask, you can't really see much, to be honest. It's, you know, it's a mask. But what is interesting there, obviously, if you've got your XL valve uh, with the sort of branded sort of cover on it, and then you've got your filter intake. It looks like on this one that when you breathe in, the air simply comes up. I'm trying to even see if there's a Tissot tube system. I don't think there is. Um, I think, yeah, by the look of it, unless it does come in through the top bit. Yeah, okay, it does. So basically, it looks like you breathe in, the air goes all the way up that nose bit there, up to where the eyes are. Again, I know this is really always awkward showing these on camera like this. But let's turn the harness inside out. So it comes all the way up into this little bit here, which you may or may not be able to see. Probably blows slightly onto each eye, but not by very much. So that's as much of a Tissot tube as you're going to get. And then when you exhale, you exhale directly out that little hole there. So yeah, essentially the air runs up the nose of the mask into the eyes um, before then being exhaled directly out the sort of port there. So I'm going to try the mask on. I don't know if it will fit me. However, I am not going to, because there's, again, there's slightly suspicious looking hairs and fibres on this, which might just be, you know, old bits of string, but I'm definitely obviously not going to brew it through the filter. The eyepieces are uh, crap anyway, as you can probably see, discoloured and, you know, everything. But, um, yeah, what I want to see is just, will the mask fit me, and if so, how will my voice sound with it on? Right, so here we go. Let's see if I can get this to work for me. So it has got one of those things I like that the Czechs put on all their masks, basically that sort of neck strap thing. Doesn't cost a, much to put that on a mask, but it is actually a good function thing that you can just take a mask off and have it hang from your neck 
rather than actually having to put it in the satchel. So, let's see if the face piece fits me. Yeah, sort of. Not not a brilliant fit, but there we go. Now let's see if I can get any of the straps adjusted to actually be good for my face. An adjustable bit on this one. Yeah, there we go. Problem is now is getting both sides of the straps pulled roughly evenly. So the mask actually sort of becomes a better fit. Right, there we go. It looks like that might actually connect to something at the back, but I can't see what with it on. Yeah, it looks like that's kind of interesting. Well, anyway, that actually seems to kind of seal to my face, which is actually cool. In a later video, I might actually, um, when I've had a proper shave and everything, um, see if I can get, um, because this is technically, I think, is it 40mm DIN, or whatever they called it, the uh, old German filter type, you can get a lot of modern filters to fit on these quite well. Again, there is cracking to the rubber and everything. I don't know how visible that is in the light. But nothing so bad, I don't think the mask's at least going to pressurise, uh, as we saw. So, this one is serial number 1308. That's actually probably where the worst cracking is on the mask in that area, look. So yeah, by the look of it, this head harness, I would assume, has some system where all the hooks on it connect together, even though it seemed to do up alright. So I'm just trying to have a look. Is there a, like, universal... Because basically, at the end of each strap, there's one of these. So I'm just trying to see, is there like a thing that they all clip onto once that you've got them on? It might might not even be that. It might just be that that's so you know that's the end you're meant to be pulling. This sort of bit. But it seems a strange thing to me that they all have one of these little um sort of bits on them. But no, that's strange. I can't actually see anything that they all connect to. Because on some masks, you do have one of those sort of bits where one of the straps has a little hook on the back. So they all hook together. I'm assuming that's just an aesthetic choice then, or, you know, to let you know where the end of the strap is. Right, let's see if I can just tighten it up again and get it roughly correct. It's definitely one of those harnesses, while it's better than the old World War II British harnesses, the ones that, um... What was I going to say? That, you know, it's not so great once you've taken it uh, off for uh, keeping it sort of tightness. Probably not helped as well that I've not put the neck strap on this time. The yeah, air still seems to be sealing. So there you go, yeah. This is actually quite a cool mask. So I'm allowed to tell you where I bought this from because it's a gas mask, but not if I buy other items from that site. So I got this from D&B Militaria. And it was one of their World War II masks that was actually decently priced. I think they have reduced the price on all their gas masks now, which is good. But yeah, this is kind of a cool thing because it's actually from World War II. And, you know, you can see some of the design influences in this from other masks. So obviously, like I said, you can. S it's harder to see with this one. But if you look at some of the other masks that this company made, um, you can definitely see where they were originally sort of Mark IV face pieces um, on these. And then, like I say, the really interesting thing is if you um, sort of then look at how... Um, I definitely think you can see the influence of the Czech CM3 in this, you know, during the communist era. Because it has a very similar kind of, you know, filter intake and sort of XL valve design. So I definitely can see the comparisons there. So in a later video, when I had a shave and everything, I will get the banana oil out and everything and see if this does actually hold up to some degree, you know. Not that it should of its age, but I'm just kind of curious. So I said, I won't breathe through the original filter for obvious reasons. It's a World War II filter dated 1940, made by a country that we know used asbestos in the production of stuff. Again, 
that's probably not your biggest worry in some sense of a filter, and just in the sense that any filter medium, if it's leaking horribly due to age, getting into your lungs, you know, you don't want to breathe any of that stuff in, regardless of if it was cotton, you know, the charcoal, any other filter components, you don't want to be inhaling it. But anyway, I thought you'd find this interesting, um, because I haven't actually done a proper gas mask video in a while. I've got another World War II gas mask that I'm going to get a video done on quite soon, uh, which is an Italian, is it a uh, M38 scored or a T38, something like that. But it's basically um, very similar to a French M51, but obviously the Italian mask came first. I know there's other like French masks and similar designs in World War II, but it's quite cool to look at, you know, an older mask where you can see how it was sort of improved in the sort of early Cold War design. Anyway, that's enough rambling about this. I uh, hope you found it interesting getting a gas mask video again.